Wassalam. Fikr. For me, the greatest thing about being a member of the Fanfare is the doors it opens into situations that you would never otherwise get to experience. Uh, we've travelled to Cuba, we've travelled to Eastern Europe, and now we're here in Palestine. And it gives you a way of finding out a lot more than you would as an individual traveller. Um, the guides we meet, the contacts we have, and of course playing for the people in all kinds of different situations. The way the trip's been organised, we've been spending a short time in one place, meeting the people there for a short time, going on somewhere else and doing the same. One of the things we can do here is to uh, take stories back to Holland, let people know the real situation and not just what they've been seeing through the media. So I think it's a good idea that we uh, see as much as possible in this short time so that we can tell as much as possible when we go back. Ik geloof niet dat het politiek veel nut heeft dat wij hier zijn. Ik geloof niet dat de regering van Israël denkt, God, er is een verfaar of zo, is eventjes de hele zaak om gaan gooien. Maar ik denk wel dat het een hart onder de riem is voor de bevolking hier. De verfaar heeft een vrij hoog tempo, dus de dagen zijn goed gevuld. Ze raden je aan om hier siesta te houden in de middag, maar ik heb er twee keer mee kunnen maken. Maar uh, ondanks dat, uh, ik zou het niet willen missen, ook de excursies niet. Want je wilt van zo'n land natuurlijk ook uh, de dingen zien waar het om gaat. En het zijn geen excursies voor de mooie dingen die we doen, maar het zijn ook excursies om te zien wat er aan de hand is natuurlijk. En dan, dan maar even vroeg op en dan maar even door de zure appel heen. Maar dan uh, neem ik dat wel op de koop toe. En spelen, ja we zijn hier om te spelen, dus gewoon spelen. Nou, het was heel spannend, ook omdat... Mensen zich ook niet lekker voelen met naar een soort van oorlogsgebied te gaan. Je weet niet of dat zo'n orkest welkom is of dat wij hier eigenlijk alleen maar last veroorzaken doordat mensen voor 28 mensen eten en onderdak moeten gaan regelen. Hebben we dat echt gecheckt? Het was wel heel duidelijk van ja kom. Het is belangrijk dat een orkest als jullie komen, dus kom. En niet zenuwachtig en het is ook niet heel spannend. Ik ben gewoon nieuwsgierig, denk ik, van uh, wat gaat er gebeuren? Hoe gaat men reageren?
En nou, toen Palestina voor het eerst te sprake kwam, uh, was ik meteen voor om mee te gaan. Behalve een hele belevenis uh, is het ook een, een, voor mij een politieke keus om, uh, om mee te gaan. De muziek is geen politiek wapen, maar wel de plek waar je speelt. Before I came to Palestine, like many other people, I think I had some idea of what the situation was here. And my idea was, it's a totally messed up situation. There are arguments to be made from both sides, and they're all as bad as each other. Everyone here in conflict, mistrust, hatred, and to be honest, I had quite a lot of doubts about whether it was a good idea for the fanfare to come here, what we could actually bring to the people here, whether they would appreciate what we were bringing. So I'd been thinking for a long time, shall I go on the trip, shall I not? I changed my opinion six times a day. It was exhausting. And then one day I was sitting quietly in the botanical gardens in Amsterdam actually, and I thought, well, if you're going to regret something ever, you might as well regret something that you have done and not that you haven't done. So at that moment I thought, I'll go, I'll see for myself, I'll make my own mind up. I'd like to start with the feeling of going to Bir Zed, and then preparing everything for the show. It was really tiring, but it was so exciting that we are preparing our own stuff to do the show. For every show, especially the first one, we're a little bit nervous. They start warming up before we, before anybody tells. So we, we start warming up so nobody hurts himself. The first show is always, uh, you always get nervous before and then you get, you got used to it. Because it's a long time that we did not perform. So I think that I learned a lot of things through meeting a lot of people from a lot of countries in the world, like to know a, lo a lot of cultures, how do people think, how to respect other people who has other thoughts or maybe other religions. <laughs> And then the orchestra came. It was really fun to hear them playing and we were preparing ourselves. All the tiredness was gone. We gaan lopen naar een plek en daar gaan we beginnen spelen. Voordat we beginnen spelen ga ik nog iets zeggen tegen de hele Dan gaan we stemmen en dan gaan we spelen. Oh, Oké. Okay. Het gaat heel gestructureerd vandaag. Vanaf nu. Vanaf nu. Nou wil ik dit. Ja, nee, nee, nee. Ik ga het niet zeggen. Ah, sorry. Sorry, nee. Ik ga het niet aan beginnen. Die niet, hè? Uit het hoofd. Officieel wel. Ja, maar dit, dit kan echt niet. Het is zo'n zootje bij ons. Ik dacht, ik doe het gewoon. We lopen toch. 
probeer het gewoon. Nee, maar, maar hij is juist uit het hoofd, is hij heel lastig. Het lijkt heel simpel, maar omdat die melodie net iets anders is, twee keer waar iedereen het doorbaart. Nee, nee, ik dacht ik gooi hem ertussen, want we lopen toch en uh, het is toch wel een beetje chaos. We hebben speciaal Palestijnse nummers uitgekozen om te arrangeren voor de varen. En we doen het elke tournee zoeken we nummers uit, uit het specifieke land van waar we naartoe gaan. En dat is om, dan krijg je beter contact met het publiek, ze vinden het leuk, ze, gaan erop, ze reageren erop. When we uh, arrived to play with the circus school, some of their drummers were sitting around. So they picked up our drums, we picked up theirs, we started jamming. And uh, if it sounded like the cliché myself, I really felt that we were making some uh, human contact in music. I only wish my Dada Buka drumming technique was a little bit better, because I've seen some amazing drummers here, and I feel like a five-year-old who's just starting to learn. But there you go. My first impression with all these color clothes and the music and the, the moves like it's kind of new thing and something really interesting like yes I want to see what they are going to do and they went put out the music I was like oh yeah that's cool we were playing walking through the streets in beer sight uh, trying to gather up an audience to take along with us to see the performance of the Palestinian circus school and we passed somebody's house and this guy came out and started talking to us about his experience. He told us about how his family had had land near Tel Aviv and that it had been taken over to make uh, an Israeli air base and that that land was still there and he still saw it as his own home and yet he had been forced to a completely different city to try and build up another life again. I don't wish that which happened for us to happen to your no. Europe people. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to come to my house, uh, I am I am very happy to see you in my house. Thank you. Thank you very, nice. very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. met die hele fanfare in zijn tuin. En dan stel ik me altijd voor hoe dat moet zijn voor iemand, voor die kinderen die er rondliepen, voor die moeder. Wat de fanfare kan oproepen, dat vind ik heel ontroerend. Andermans hart raken. En dat het heel van ons ook vanuit het hart komt. En dat je dat met die hele band, met die muziek kan geven. En dan krijg je het ook weer terug van hun. The occupation cannot stop us from meeting people from outside, gathering them together and do something together. The people sympathize, they feel with us, they know what's going on here, they would like to know more, they come, they ask, they, uh, they discuss things that they don't know, so it's a good thing. نشر الثقافة بين الفلسطينية ونورجي إسرائيل إنه إنه في عنا إشي يعني أو إنه في إشي منسويه حلو
عبء علي وشي يعني انه انه انا لما بشوف انه البلد اللي انا عايش فيها بقدرش اتنكل فيها زي ما بدي بقدرش افوت على الش... وين ما بدي بدي انه يعني بحس إن بالقهر انه مثلا برضه بيفرضوا علينا شغلات انه مثلا انا هيو يعني انه انا شاب بسمحش لحدا انه انه يأمرني او انه يمشيني على خاطره انه لو عند الحاجز بصير الواحد فينا زي البسة او اشي زي هيك او مش عشان حاله عشان اهله او عشان انه يدير باله على حدا غيره Ik ben misschien het meest verrast door de hele verschijnsel Circus School. En ik vind het zo goed dat ze dat hier opzetten, dat je gewoon heel sterk wordt erdoor. En dat ze dat met jongens en meisjes door elkaar doen, meisjes in de spagaat, ondersteboven in de spagaat hangen. Nou, laat ze maar lekker doen. The Palestinian case is really uh, combined with the economy. The power of Israel is coming from the economy. They are controlling our economy, so we can't really improve ourselves. So we are try here our best to buy God the Israeli products in addition to improve ourselves, to make ourselves stronger. For me, all I can do is to get a really good education and I think education is my weapon to defend my country. And we are humans, just like you. There is a lot of work and a lot of يفهموا انه احنا بنرسل لهم رساله معينه عن طريق هذا ال... انه حلم منهم بدهم يوصلوا على القمر انهم بيقدروا ياخذوا معهم الناس الثانيين وبيقدروا يورجوا الناس انه القمر شيء مش مستحيل ومعناه غير هيك انه يعني برضه الفلسطينيه انه عندهم احلام يسووها حريه هلا شيخي هلا 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 or internationals to know exactly what's going on in the city. Because I like Jerusalem, I love Jerusalem. So I try to explain them exactly what's going on in the ground. Our guide in the city of Jerusalem was an enormously impressive figure. I was really struck by his lack of resentment, by his spirit of conciliation, by his openness, and his hopeful attitude to the future, he made a great impression on me for all those reasons. In 1967, it was a big change in my life. I was hearing the news, and we heard that a war broke out between Egypt and Israel. The war began on 5th of June, and the 7th of June, two days later, the old city of Jerusalem was occupied by the soldiers.
my dreams were gone. I remember my coach asked me to go to the United States to play basketball here. He told me, you are talented, you can go. I told him, okay, I can go. What could you guarantee that I can come back? Because I know people who went for some time, they couldn't come back. And I saw at that time how Israelis is taking people in the buses and throw them to Jordan. So do you want me, I love Ali, I will never leave. Jerusalem is my homeland, I will never leave Jerusalem. So I stayed here. And then later on, we began to think, how could we liberate Palestine and occupy territories? And we know at that time, and we see that Israel occupied us by airplanes, by tanks, and all these things. How? So I found some people who were at that time part of Popular Front for Liberation of Palestine, and I joined this group. And this group really made several military actions in Hebron and in Jerusalem and also in Tel Aviv. So in the 4th of uh, September 1968, what they called the bus uh, stop uh, military action at that time, Central Bus Station, uh, one of the people were arrested at that time from my group and he uh, told the story. And that's why I was arrested. They accused me to be a member of a legal organization that perpetrated some military actions against the Israelis here. What myself, I didn't do it. Not because I don't want to do it, because I didn't have the chance to do it. <laughs> because if I had the chance, I did it, really. And I was sentenced to 25 years in jail. I spent 17 of them. I was released during prison exchange in 1985. I went out of jail more human than I was in. So when I was went to jail, I was very angry. I want to kill anybody. I want to destroy everything just to protect my country. See, during my stay, I began to think, so why should I kill a person, a local person kill me? I feel the Holy Spirit doesn't worth a drop of human blood. Because in principle, I found out that I didn't choose what to be. I didn't choose to be black. I didn't choose to be a man. I didn't choose to be a Palestinian or whatever. You came naked to this world. At the same time, you leave it naked. Even the regime didn't choose, because my father is Muslim, I'm Muslim. If your mother were a Jew, it's not be a Jew. So the only criteria to see this is better than that is your deed, according to other people. So in principle, I say we are all human beings. I don't have any problem, whether Christian or Muslim or Jew or Buddhist, whatever. Cooperation, not confrontation. So that's why I see I get out of prison. It's more human. The balance of power now is not uh, enough so as to have a fair say uh, settlement. I tell you our case in Palestine here since 1993, even before we went through negotiations. Until now, what did we get? Give me an example in the whole world that people, people, give such a concession, give up 78% of their homeland to the enemy. Only we are asking now only for 22% for the Palestine, not more than that. And still they don't say. De lagere school leerde ik alleen, uh, nou ja, Palestina is een grote woestijn en daar heb je af en toe een oase. Er zitten wat mensen met uh, tulbanden, het zijn Arabieren, 
En, uh, maar ja, goed, er is zoveel ruimte en er is zoveel voor de Joden, alles, alle plaatsen, ruimte. Nou ja, maar dat is dus helemaal niet waar. Het land is gewoon bevolkt met Palestijnen. Wij kunnen ons dat niet. Ja, we hebben dit in Berlijn natuurlijk, maar dat is niet te vergelijken met dit. Ja. Toen werden ook families gescheiden. Het is, het, is, ja, het is misschien ook wel vergelijkbaar. Het lijkt hier zoveel groter en zoveel heftiger allemaal, die muren. Het is ook kriskras door Palestina gaat, die muren. Het is, er is geen, geen pijl op te trekken hoe die loopt. De hele, de hele gebieden zijn totaal verdeeld en in, in tweeën gesplitst en in drieën gesplitst. En, ja, het is heel vreemd. And now, if we want to talk about the solution between Palestinians and Israel, now, for now, the, the short term, I don't find any. There's no. Now, the only thing we are uh, talking about now, to have a state within 1967 borders. But for me, I don't think this is a solution. It, it will not, it's not enough. Because as a Palestinian, I'll never forget Haifa, Nazareth, Aker, only singular. As soon as I will pass for them. And also as is in Israeli or a Jew, whatever, you also will never forget about Hebron, for example, or Nablus or whatever. Soon later we'll get to. So we'll have soon or later another war. So what for? So what I believe in, we should have one state for all its people. We are Christians, Muslims, Jews, Buddhists, whatever. We are equal citizens in one state. A secular state. We should So we should look for the things which gather us together, not the things which split us together. It's a village near Yafa. They come to the camp in the war. At 67, they escaped from their country because they, there is groups from Israelians stole their houses and burned their houses. They left all their land and they escaped with many children, 11. 
They are very afraid. They don't know what to take, what to have with them. And mom said that she have the key. She think that she will return back. They told them uh, that uh, don't afraid, we'll, you'll return back. Maybe it's one week or two weeks, maybe it's a month. Uh, don't be afraid, you'll return back to your home. But when they left, there's no return back. When they saw the camp here, they see it, it's just a small room. Three meter with three meter, eleven in the same room. There is no bathrooms. There is no electric, and they light the shema and speak stories, nice story. We remember it until now, and we tell it for our children. It was very nice day because they was afraid to be alone, so all the night they spent time uh, together. I think it's very hard to say to them, go, it's not, your, it's not their country. Really, it's not their country, but, but we want to solve this problem. We want to solve. If you, it's okay to have this land between us, it's okay, but we want to return back to our land. We want to be friends with bees, really bees, not bees and bee bird. All the time, Israeli government give us something and take it from our hands. I live in Askar because all of my family in Askar. Not all the family in Askar can live because it needs much money. So I spent all my life in the camp. 42 years I'm here. Yes, I work in the kindergarten. I am the manager. I feed my family. My daughter, she married. And I, I have three sons, one of them, he's in the university, the other in the high class. And Karam, My son Karam, I can't see him all the time on the computer. Nablus, when they say this is from the camp, he's, he's not have good behavior. But really, uh, the guys in the camp, good guys, and can help and can speak. But the area is the reason, because they live in closed houses, they haven't gardens. So maybe there's in their side something hard. Maybe it it seems in their behavior. The children, yeah, that were from the street ratjes. As they then even on the street, as they ratjes stond er ook of zo, dan kwamen ze met fietsen over je tenen en fietsen bij wijze van spreken en die keken niet links of niet rechts. En ik snap dat wel. Het zijn hele kleine steegjes, hele kleine huizen. Die kinderen leven al zakelijk buiten natuurlijk. Dus ze zijn gehaald. Dat dat viel me op. Die kinderen zijn gehaald. Wat ik heb gezien in de vluchtelijke kampen is dat mensen uh, tegen de klippen op proberen om de kinderen toch. Uh, ja, iets te geven. Maar er is zo weinig om te geven. 
En het heeft veel meer met overleven te maken dan uh, met, met dat extra wat kinderen nodig hebben. Want die jongeren kunnen echt geen kant op. Er is niets. If uh, will happen another intifada, I will be, I'll be very sad because the, my son grow enough, and this age is very dangerous. They they take uh, them without doing anything. The, just uh, their age is uh, it's dangerous for Israel. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And uh, we spent hard time in it. It's enough. We must leave. We we dream with our land, my mother and my grandmother. She died and she wait, wait. We will back, will back, will back. She did and uh, uh, there is nothing happened. We de we take the dream. Just I think it's just dream. And we dream to see the sea. I want to uh, to catch fish, <laughs> really. Abu Masab, and I am the assistant mayor of uh, Kofar Kardum Council Union. I born here in Kofar Kardum. I learned three years in um, a high school of uh, mechanicals. Uh, after this period, I'll go to Kuwait and I work in Kuwait in KOC company, uh, which uh, as a mechanical side. I was uh, so happy there. I live with my family until the Gulf War is happened. After that, I came to Kofar Kardum back. Now I am working as a volunteer in our uh, council uh, union in Kofar Kardum. Now uh, we have nearly 4,000 people living in Kofar Kardum, and because of the bad situation, nearly 800 people is leaving the village in the last three years to the other uh, towns uh, searching for war. People is leaving the village because of the uh, occupation treatment of the uh, people. That they close our main road. Uh, we was uh, use this road before thousand of years, and they close it in 2003. First, they ask the people. If you are from Kofar Kardum civilian, okay, you can enter. This is the beginning. And after a little period of time, they close it. Completely, they close it by two gates. One from Jit side and the other from the village side. They close it because they said that uh, the settlers' safety. 
But the problem belonged to the settlers. Settlers didn't want to see any Palestinian people in the area, and this is the reason of the condition. Uh, this road was only one and a half kilometer to Jit village, and now we must walk another uh, 14 kilometers. We must to have more money for transport and people cannot arrive to the lands because they forbidden it. And because of this, the land is in very bad situation. Instead of 100%, if they are taking care of it, now it's nearly 25% the product of the olives. Every night they enter, by the way, in the village, the Israeli army. Every night is making uh, around in our village. They use this road for army only. And they are not allowing for the ambulancing to, to carry the people inside this road. People died because of this situation. So because of this, now we began to make a uh, peace march every week, every Friday. Uh, you can say 50% from the people hope that it will be succeed. And other 50 said no, nothing will happen. Yeah, I think that it is uh, very uh, good and kind also. And it is a new kind of march that we are going with music. Het al of niet meedoen met de demonstratie wekt er nogal wat discussie op. En dan met name over het risico dat er geweld gebruikt zou gaan worden door het Israëlisch leger. En dan met name het risico op het gebruik van traangas. If you'd asked me at the beginning of the trip or before we went on it, would you like to be joining in with a demonstration like this? I would have said no. Now. I think um, it would almost be cowardly of us to say we're prepared to come and play our happy music, we're prepared to walk along the streets in our bright coloured clothes, but we're not prepared to go a step further and stand alongside the people demonstrating. Uiteindelijk zijn we toch meegelopen in een demonstratie, eigenlijk zonder discussie verder. Het was gewoon zo. Somewhere that we're not going with the band is to the settlements on the West Bank. I agree with that. I don't think we should be even implying any support. But I'd like to know something about the mentality of those people. Um, they seem to have such an extremely certain position. They're so convinced of their own absolute rightness. I'd like to know more about how somebody comes to such an extremely one-sided view. To be honest, I had quite a lot of doubts about whether I should join the tour at all. One of the worries I had about the trip was that people's opposition to the state of Israel would in fact be translated into anti-Semitism, into opposition to the Jewish people. Um, in fact, many people I've spoken to here have gone out of their way to say that they have no opposition, no hatred in their hearts towards Jewish people as such, but to the Zionist policies of the Israeli government and the colonization of Palestine. Ik voel me machteloos om deze situatie te veranderen, absoluut. En ik word er ook ontzettend kwaad over. 
Maar ik heb ook niet het idee dat de voorvare een middel is om de situatie in een land te veranderen. De voorvare is meer van hart tot hart. De jongens die gaan duwen, die uh... ja. Ik ga niet weg, dat Ik kan niet weg, dat ziet ze maar. It's okay. This is an illusion. Okay. Can I can smell it. Oh, I'm so shaking. Yeah. Oh. Ja, ik had het al om naar Palestina te gaan en niet naar Israël, dat is sowieso een politieke keuze. En ik kan me voorstellen dat een volgende reis gewoon weer naar Frankrijk gaat, tentjes mee, kamperen, zwembadje, ook leuk, maar heel anders.